today i'm super excited to be showing you how to make a full shrine track from scratch we're going to be talking about every single element as well as all automation and the full arrangement of the track as well to go along this video you can grab this full track template for ableton the link is at the top of the description on my website then we go grab that it's the best shrine template like this i've seen on the market i put a lot of time into studying these tracks and figuring out what's going on so that we can all benefit from it so then we go ahead and grab this while it's available it's the best shrine template on the market thanks for all the support everybody i promise if you grab this you're gonna make the best track of your life today links at the top of the description let's dive in all right so we're at 158 bpm and the first thing we actually have up here is the side chain it's just the kick but really short and then we're side chaining everything to that and then we have the drums now i'm going to explain this a little bit more in a bit but we actually have all the drums in one group here which you wouldn't typically do with techno right but I'll show you why we put everything, including the kick, into here in a moment. We're going to start with the kick, though. So this is the kick. If I turn off all the group processing, and then I'll turn that back on when I get to it. So we got this kick, and it's starting with just nice, punchy man kick, right? And then we have a rumble. So what we're doing for this rumble is, it's actually kind of weird, so I'm basically taking this, this other kick here, we're stretching it out with the warp, but you can see what I did is I actually moved the, where the sample starts a little bit into the sample, so if I move that around you'll see why. So yeah, you're getting all these different tones based on where you are on the sample. So yeah, that's really important, and it tends to be the further you go down the kick sample, the lower it is, right? Because a kick is basically just a pitch that goes, like, from very high to very low very quickly, right? With a little bit of detail in that. So we're taking that part, okay? We got this arpeggiator, making it do 16th notes. Then we're distorting it. Band passing which really allows you to get that nice low end rumble that's not too heavy like it gives you the like kind of higher frequencies that you want we've got it's being side chain and then that's it but then we have another layer of rumble so it's pretty much the same thing you can see right i set it up using the same thing just duplicating it that's a great way to make these rumble layers is just duplicate your main rumble and treat it a little bit differently this one's got a heavier distortion and then we're band passing it. And then there's also a side or a high pass after the side chain. So you can see how those fit together. So then on the group here, we have a little bit of processing as well. Here's with nothing. And then with it. So you can see it's very subtle, but we just have a little bit of saturation here. It's at 10% wet. So if I turn that up. That's what's happening, but obviously we're just blending that. We've got a high pass here, cutting at 55 hertz. Just cutting out some of the mud. And like I said, these are like pretty high rumbles. So you want to like push it up a little bit with that. Here, there's, so then there's this utility at the end, converting everything to mono. But we also have these two. So what's happening here is there's a high pass filter, which comes on throughout the track, right? You know, pretty standard hard techno stuff just for some transitions. But then I also have this overdrive, and for some of those high passes, the kick actually gets distorted. I noticed this when I was studying a lot of reference tracks, especially like OBI. 
Like they'll do this just having like in that part where the kicks high pass just like way distorted. You could even go heavier. They'll do that right and then it'll just hit normal but yeah so we've got that and that's it for the kick. Then we have our main hi-hat. <clears throat> you know simple no frills just something very punchy. We have this percussion, which is just doing like some 16th notes. You can see I've got every quarter note cut out for the kick. And you see how that fits together in the percussion, right? So just having that like rim shot, just like that. We've got a ride cymbal with some chorus and reverb to give it a bit of stereo width. It's also being side chain and we're high passing that. Then we have the loops. Now, when you make these kinds of tracks, obviously these percussion loops are everything. I've done a few videos breaking down how to make them. They're on my channel. But basically, you're gonna want a lot of these. Like, it's basically, if you look at this track, like we turn off all the drums, You know, there's very little happening in this track other than drums. So you have room for all these loops to just kind of be playing at once. And it still fits together really well because there's not a lot of other stuff that's going to get in the way of that. So basically what's happening, I'll turn off the group processing and just go one by one here. So that's all the loops. We got this one. This one. So you can see those kind of fit together and create like some nice mid-range and highs. We got this one, which is chopped. I can hear what that adds on the other ones. We've got this one, which is like very bright. So now you add that. And now there's some like super bright highs, which is good for what I'll show you next. We've got also this. And there you go, you put it all together and you get this. And then on the group, I put a little bit of saturation. Right, you want these to pretty be pretty hard and distorted and crunchy. I've got a side chain. And then we're high passing them. So then the last part with the drums is like I said, we put everything into a group here. And the reason for this is basically to saturate everything against the kick. Now, with these Shrine Strikes, obviously they're very crunchy, very full sounding. And a lot of that is basically that sound of having something with a lot of low end. And then having something with a lot of mid range and highs. Right? And then putting those into a saturation together. And see, when I make it completely wet, you can really hear that. The way that those push up against each other. That's what you're going for. You need that in the Shrine Strikes. And then what we're doing is we just have it at 9%. So it's just like the perfect amount of like a crunchy layer without overtaking everything. And we also have this high pass and low pass which are for some of the transitions like in the break here. You know, just kind of making it disappear slowly over time. I think that's very important for those, like, breaks. Also, because we want these drums to come in here and not be right in your face right away. And then we can make a build. And there we are. Okay, so there's the drums. Then we have the vocals. So what it is, is there's this one vocal sample that I took and I did all the vocals with this. Searching for love, searching for love. I'm searching for love. So I took that, right, I warped it a bit. First of all, you're going to want to make sure this is very much in time and very like tight on the grid. Searching for love, searching for love. You can see I took that. Searching for love. Love, where it's kind of like a longer note. Searching for love. And just literally just made it really short. So then you can take that and go. Right? Like that can just be a quarter note. 
And then what's happening, so there's the chopping, which is really not that complicated. Like I said, if you actually look at what's happening there. <laughs> right, but then we have the effects. So we got a bit of overdrive. Here, I'll turn this back off. We got a bit of overdrive. <laughs> and reverb, which also has a lot of automation, because there's a lot of parts in here where you're going to want this to kind of like just go away. We're also automating the decay of the reverb. Right, see, and that makes it disappear there. To make room for these chops, you know. And it also creates a lot of background sound, too, because, again, like, there's not that much happening here. So then that... Uh, with all the reverb going up is actually pretty powerful. We have a high-pass filter also, which goes up... To make that kind of disappear there. And then we have a side chain, which is actually being automated on at one spot over here. I'll show you where it goes like this. Which I guess I could just not have the side chain playing there, but I automated it also here. Because here I wanted this to be side chain. So we still got the side chain running, but this didn't need to be side chain there. And then we just get that middle searching for love, love. And then we're into the vocal chops. So then for the vocal chops, what I did is I took that same vocal and just you can double click or right click if you're on PC, slice the new MIDI track, and then I did it by transient. And so you get all those words. Right, as little chops. And then you can see there's a bit of effects on this. I'll turn those off though, just so you can hear what's actually kind of happening here. So on its own, it sounds like this. So then for effects, we're high passing it. There's a bit of delay. And overdrive after the delay adds a lot of rhythm to that. A little bit of reverb with some automation throughout the track, right? To make that just like kind of come in and then get washed out there. And then over here, it just stays down. We're side chaining this, which I think is really important for the groove with something like this. It's not just the chops. It's like the way it fits with the drums. And we also have a high pass filter, which is mostly to get rid of the lows so it won't get in the way of the drums. But also here it helps bring it in. Then we've also got these two little vocal chops. So yeah, that's just kind of like for that intro to give it something a little bit fresh. It was getting a little bit flat here, and this keeps it exciting with something new. So there's these two chops from the vocal. You can see. Right, I've kind of just put them on top of each other. And then what's happening is there's a bit of automation. So it's got like some delay and reverb and a high pass. We're automating the reverb to go up and the high pass filter as well to just kind of transition that. Same thing with this one, you know, just delay and reverb and high pass. This one's side chained a little. And again, just automation on the high pass to bring it in and out. Same thing with the reverb there. And then I also automated these to turn off here. So you could kind of get like this big, it's getting like really ambient and then it just cuts. Right, so we've got that. Then we have this little kind of like effects loop made up of two samples. Right, you can hear that in the whole track. So what's happening is it's these two playing off of each other, kind of like call and response. Right, the purple one is the call, the brown one is the response. This can be made with almost anything. I made these by manipulating some audio. So for the call, what it is, is it's actually a full rave loop. I'll show you. 
It's like this. That one, it's from my hard techno drum library. And then I took just this one little hit from it. I think I pitched it maybe. Yeah, I pitched it up. And there's a high pass filter. And then there's a resonator on the B mode. So it gives you that like metallic kind of thing. And it's nice. It just adds a little bit of a cool percussive texture. And then for this one, it's this effect sample I'll show you. And I just took that ending. But you can see I made it more of like a percussion. I pitched it down a lot, and then I have the sustain all the way down, so it gets really tight and punchy. Then we have some reverb, a little bit of distortion, and then a high pass filter. Then we really just have the effects in the track, and there's not that much of it, right? You know, there's a few little sounds like transitions, like all these little kinds of things. You know, pretty simple stuff, right? You know, most of it's happening with the actual elements, right? Like all that reverb automation, all the filter automation we've been talking about. But you know, there's still a few things. We've got like a snare building up here. You know, as the drums disappear, this 909 snare comes in with just a bit of volume automation, a bit of reverb automation at the end to make it kind of wash out, right, into like a riser and also a high pass filter. So that's one. There's also like this rave loop, which comes for the break. That's just being saturated, converted, or I guess I've got a utility on there, and then I've got a high pass filter which brings it in and makes it disappear. And that's just letting to kind of keep the rhythm moving in the breaks. You know, it keeps the energy going. I'll show you this little effect sound too. This one's kind of cool. It's just like this pitch LFO inside of analog. So we got a saw wave, right? We got a low pass filter with an envelope and an LFO on it. And then we also have the LFO on the pitch. You can see, so you're getting this wow. Then we're just distorting it. A little bit of chorus, a little bit of reverb. High pass. And there you go, it's a cool way to synthesize some effects for a track like this. And yeah, so that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full track template, fully arranged Shrine's project file is available at the top of the description on my website for a super accessible, affordable price. It allows you to really get going and get started with this style and have an awesome template to build really high quality tracks from. Definitely don't miss out, guys. This has got everything you need to get started or for some new inspiration if that's what you're looking for. Anything in between. Thank you so much for the support everybody every little bit helps and i will see you tomorrow with another video